this is a bill to uh, put Old Sparky into retirement. Um, Old Sparky is the nickname for the uh, Virginia electric chair. And um, just first of all, Doug and Miller gave you all a little bit of background about how currently today, since 1995, when somebody receives a death sentence, the uh, condemned person is given a choice as to whether or not they would like to be executed by lethal injection or by the electric chair. Uh, the reality of today is that actually a lot of inmates don't actually choose, and it's defaulted to lethal injection, but they do, in theory, have a choice. The history of electrocution is kind of interesting. Um, it actually dates back to the 1880s uh, when New York first adopted it because it was seen as being more humane than a hanging. And uh, at the actual technology was spawn of a, of a big fight between uh, George Westinghouse and Thomas Edison, both of which wanted to prove each other's technology was more lethal than the others so it would be adopted for general use. And uh, Edison believed that, that uh, he wanted everybody to believe that alternating current was more lethal. Westinghouse wanted everybody to believe that di direct current was more lethal to put each other out of business. And um, Thomas Edison ended up winning, which is why we have um, or, uh, Westinghouse. Thomas Edison ended up, ended up winning the battle. And um, interestingly, the very first litigation over the death penalty was actually funded by, uh, by Westinghouse and, and Edison fighting each other through the criminal process. After some of New York's experiences and other states began to adopt electrocution, Virginia adopted it as, as its method of execution in 19, uh, 1908. And the electric chair was uh, upheld by the Supreme Court of Virginia in 1921 in the case of Hart v. Commonwealth. But it's also important to note that when it was adopted, it was basically adopted based on very little, if any, science at all. <laughs> Um, you can't exactly, you can't exactly test that. Um, you can't test how to electrocute a human being. It's, it was more of a trial by error kind of a thing as it, as it went into effect. But it's, it, uh, the Supreme Court of Virginia just sort of looked at other states doing it and said, well, you know, it seems to be working and it seems to be killing people and we're going to just keep using it. So since, since that time, since, uh, before 1976, Virginia executed about 1,200 people. Since 1976, Virginia's executed 110. The current death row population is eight. And um, that, that chair is still there, and it's actually used every once in a while, but not very often. 85% um, of the states that used electrocution at one time, 85% of the states that, that have adopted electrocution at one point in time have now abolished it. And the reason is because it's 1880s technology. Just to give you an idea what we're talking about, um, this is the, the same time frame when movies were invented, um, when a thing called Coca-Cola was invented to, because of prohibition, um, when uh, this guy uh, uh, Hertz began transmitting radio waves, when the guy Benz invented the automobile. This is, the tech, this is when this technology dates to. And most of these states have gotten rid of it and moved on to solely execute by lethal injection. And today in the United States, there are only four states remaining that still authorize electrocution for uh, people that are newly convicted. Uh, we are in the company of Alabama, Florida, and South Carolina. Kentucky and Tennessee still have executions every once in a while, but it's only for people who are convicted uh, before a certain date. But they don't authorize it for anybody that's convicted uh, today. Uh, two states, Supreme Courts, have actually found that electrocution constitutes cruel and unusual punishment. Supreme Court of Georgia in 2001, and the Supreme Court of Nebraska in 2009. And because of that, Virginia's share of, of executions is actually declining, but its share of electrocutions is actually increasing because um, we're one of the few states that still allows it. And the last three electrocutions in the United States were, were done in, in, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And actually, five of the last eight <coughs> electrocutions in the United States were in Virginia. The last one was actually last year, January of 2013. Um, from my point of view, the reason I introduced this is because this is an outdated, old, old-fashioned technology, and, and it's it's not something we should continue to adhere to. It's the rest of the country is moving on to lethal injection. They see that as a more humane, appropriate way to uh, execute people, if that's what uh, the Commonwealth chooses to do.
it's also not an easy thing to do. Keeping Virginia staff trained on this method, keeping them informed on how to actually do it, and keeping the equipment around and maintained properly so that we don't have a legal problem is not easy. Uh, it, it's not um, teaching somebody how to electrocute a human being is not an easy thing to do. Uh, additionally, um, from my point of view, uh, I think keeping our current system in place subjects us to actual legal challenge that we could, I think, avoid if we didn't have this method on the books. As I said earlier, two Supreme Courts, state Supreme Courts, have already found, that's Georgia and Nebraska, that electrocution constitutes cruel and unusual punishment. The U.S. Supreme Court has not found that. Uh, but in 2008, the U.S. Supreme Court, when they last touched on, on, um, when they last touched on uh, cruel and unusual punishment in the context of death penalty, what they specifically said was, Proper alternatives to a method of execution must effectively address the substantial risk of serious harm. To qualify, an alternative procedure must be feasible, readily implemented, and in fact significantly reduce a substantial risk of severe pain. If the state refuses to adopt an alternative in the face of these documented advantages without a legitimate peniological justification for adhering to its current method of, of execution, then the state's refusal to change its method can be viewed as cruel and unusual punishment of the Eighth Amendment. Electrocution cannot do what it does without mutilating a person. It causes burns, it causes organs to cook, um, it, it causes damage to a person's body. It is impossible. There are documented cases of, of people smoking, of, of blood coming out of people, of people catching on fire. It's, uh, it is impossible to electrocute a person without having some form of mutilation, and there's also been documented situations of people experiencing pain. Lethal injection, on the other hand, has been upheld repeatedly in numerous courts, and uh, it continues to be upheld today. Now, I heard earlier um, Doug and Miller um, talk, mentioned that there have been issues with the, the uh, current drug cocktail that's been used. What, what, what has occurred is that the European manufacturers of some products have uh, decided they're not going to ship them to the United States if they're going to be used to execute persons. And what has happened since then is that American compounding pharmacies have stepped up to the plate and developed compounds to, to use in lieu of the European drugs. Uh, and um, in um, mid-November, actually just a few months ago, November of 2013, Missouri executed a guy named Joseph Paul Franklin. He's actually the man who, uh, who uh, shot Larry Flint. Mm -hmm. And they executed him using a pentobarbital cocktail. A federal judge ordered a stay in the case. That was overruled by a federal appellate court and the United States Supreme Court ordered him to be executed. And he was executed using a, a, a drug compound cocktail developed by a compounding pharmacy. Uh, and so while there was a concern about drugs, the U.S. Supreme Court has approved alternate methods by compounding pharmacies. It's not a real concern. The technology we're using is old, it's outdated, it dates back to before we had movies and Coca-Cola. It's um, something that's out of favor in the United States. We are increasingly, iso increasingly isolated by continuing to use it, and Virginia needs to move on to another technology. That's why I introduced this legislation. I've got one question. Dr. Sherman, are you in favor of any, any form of uh, death penalty? Personally? Personally, I'm not. But uh, I did not, this, this bill does not abolish the death penalty. Or a method. It just it just says we have to have one method. But you don't think it's any crime by which a person deserves to be put to death? Scott Surabell, no. Well, it's patron of the bill. That's what I'm right. This the bill doesn't have anything to do with that, but I personally don't. Well, you you describe you know some of the uh, <coughs> uh, effects of, of uh, you know, uh, electrocuting someone as, as far as, and, and different methods of execution. And, but I I just would add. That, some of the things people do to other human beings are, are, are gross to the extent that, that uh, I, my first opinion is I think the death penalty is appropriate. And uh, in Virginia, it seems to me they have a choice. You know, they can either take electrocution or, or lethal injection. Um, and that, that's that's my opinion. I'd like to have any other, any other comments from the committee. Well, I, I, I certainly take the gentleman at his word about his rationale for the bill, and I would never suggest that he had another motive. But I will say that there are groups that are probably in support of this bill who 
on any other day would have used the flashpoint of lethal injection as their reasoning why the death penalty should, the penalty should be abolished. So on the one hand, I'm hearing from the gentleman, electrocution is antiquated, even though I'm sure there are things that are thousands of years old that are very effective and swift methods of execution. We just choose not to use them for whatever reason. Um, but lethal injection has been the most recent place where death penalty opponents have said these things are, are, are botched, they're inhumane. I'm looking, I was looking at the Amnesty International <coughs> website uh, just, just at a glance, talking. they were talking about anything but humane is the title of the, of the, of the top of the uh, article, or their position on lethal injection. They say lethal injection causes, it causes excruciating pain. They say a number of lethal injections have been botched in the United States. Uh, they talk about grimacing and convulsing during executions, gasping for air, uh, severe long chemical burns to the skin and needles, same kind of thing the gentleman was just talking about with, with electrocution. Um, uh, they talk about the medical ethics involved. So, and there have been some high profile, I think in Florida most recently that I can think of, um, places where death penalty opponents have said, look, look how bad lethal injection is. And uh, that's certainly the prevailing wind within death penalty opponents to say all the things you just said about electrocution, they, they're saying about lethal injection too. So by taking away one method, then that leaves just the one left, right, that is also really, really bad for all the kinds of reasons you were just saying. And um, so while you may not have another motive, I would suggest humbly that there are other people who have a motive to advance this kind of legislation to limit this down now down to one place that they have already begun to attack as being inhumane for any kinds of number of reasons. And if that's the only battle they've got left to fight, then they're much closer to achieving their ultimate goal, which is, is doing away with the death penalty, which <coughs> we can argue both sides of that. I mean, you, there may be many valid um, reasons uh, to be on either side of this issue, but as far as what the goal of this kind of legislation is, I think it's clear that we're trying to narrow this down to one thing left to argue about. Dr. Like Sir, did you have one big response? Yeah, I think there might have been a question for the patron there somewhere, but <laughs> the, uh, the, um, but what I would say is that the reason that you're seeing all that activity there is because method, electrocution method doesn't exist in the, uh, in the 30, in 28 other states that, that have ex executions anymore. And so that's kind of where the battleground has shifted. But in, in two states in the last 10 years where electrocution was actually challenged in the Supreme Court, it was thrown out as being cruel and unusual. In Georgia, of all places, and in Nebraska. These are not, you know, bastions of New England liberalism. liberalism. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I would submit that by leaving it on the books, I think Virginia's process is more subject to challenge than if it was only lethal injection, which has been approved by the United States Supreme Court, uh, and um, uh, and and I think is is probably legally a safer way for the Commonwealth to go. There's um, people here to speak as well, Mr. Chairman. So. Okay. Anyone you'd like to call forward to speak? Be perfectly honest. I, I don't have any witnesses. But there's a few people back there. Okay, I'll, want to speak. We, we don't get to them. I just want to make clear that I wasn't trying to. To uh, uh, declare any of your motives as well, you know, as far as that. But uh, I personally uh, think that there are crimes that there's no question that deserve a death penalty. <coughs> and the, the two methods that Virginia has, given the person's choice, the choice, I don't say you can get better than that. I personally don't. Lethal injection, you put somebody to sleep, some of the things they do to people uh, is, is not quite that humane. And, uh, at any rate, uh, any further questions from the committee? Uh, and Mr. Perfect. Chairman, I'll just tell you this really quick. I mean, there was an article in Virginia, in the Virginia State Bar Magazine, Virginia Lawyer, in December 2012, which talked about electrocution, the history of it, brought my attention to it. I also heard the same person who wrote the article talk about it. <clears throat> that article just talks about electrocution and its history and it's old and how Virginia is an outlier. That's what got my attention. That's why I introduced it. So I'm happy to circulate around if everyone wants to read it. Does the court, uh, the court case Bail versus Commonwealth deal with uh, the topic of electrocution and whether it's uh, cruel and unusual yeah. punishment or not. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that case. My understanding is that the court has ruled electrocution 
Cooper the usual punishment in the case of Bell versus Commonwealth. They did in 1921 in the case of Hart v. Commonwealth. They might have had another case since then that looked at it. But uh, anyone here would like to speak in opposition to the bill? Anybody like to speak in favor of the bill? Mr. Chairman, yes, Steve Northup with Virginians for Alternatives to the Death Penalty and at the risk of uh, validating Delegate Gilbert's uh, very articulate, uh, <laughs> very articulate uh, words, uh, I, we do oppose this bill, but we oppose it not because we've got any underhanded uh, plan to try and do away in this fashion with capital punishment in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We're working on that on other fronts. I see this as the evolution of what has gone on for centuries of abandoning old methods of execution on humanitarian grounds. There were many old, really old, methods of execution that are no longer done because everybody would agree they're cruel and unusual. Drawing and quartering was done in England, for example. Uh, hanging has been abandoned in most places on that ground as well. Um, so I think the consensus, as Delegate Surreville has pointed out, is really growing in this country that electrocution is, in fact, cruel and unusual. Two state Supreme Courts from conservative states have already so held. And I think on that ground alone, Virginia ought to join the vast majority of states that used to use electrocution and not use it anymore. Thank you. Uh, I'm ready for a motion of the Mr. Scott. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Testify. We also support this bill. I would see uh, electrocution as an cruel and unusual punishment, and uh, we see it as an outlier to use this method. Anybody else in favor? Yes, sir. Um, Virginia Pod with Virginia Catholic Conference, and I associate myself with um, <coughs> other gentlemen and we support this bill. Thank you. Mark Grimaldo with the Virginia Interface Center for Public Policy, and we also support the bill. Okay. Anyone else that likes to speak in favor? It don't work. Uh, does the committee have any further comment? If not, we're ready for a motion. I would move to leave the bill on the table, Mr. Chair. Do I have a second? The motion has been made and seconded to lay the bill on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One no. The motion carries. The bill is laid on the table.